Hi there, welcome to Weekly Podcast. This, uh, my name is Gurmeet and uh, my, uh, today my guest is John Hudson. Um, John graduated with a degree in English literature from the University of Western Ontario in London. He has uh, returned twice to Ivy's Business School at Western to graduate to postgrad and to take postgraduate studies in strategic planning and marketing. Um, John's career spans over 30 years in a marketing and communication experience with the Canadian corporations. In his role as a director of marketing for Notel Networks, John successfully ran a business unit for a company in Canada and in the US. His responsibilities included marketing planning, sales, and operations. In addition, John taught marketing program to Notel employees who were responsible for specific business lines around that world. After leaving Notel, John became partner in one of the Canada's foremost communication firm, where he worked extensively with organizations such as Atomic Energy of Canada Limited, CIBC, and Ontario Hydro on brand development and financial communication. John currently involves in two companies. First, John is president of Clearwater Corporate Communication, a firm that specializes in developing and designing marketing communication strategies and communication program for Canadian corporations. His most recent work, is in, works, uh, work includes branding development and communication work for Interior Security Commissions, Canada Public Accountability Board, Duke of Edinburgh and Awards Program, APMA, Toronto Parks and Tree Foundation, Wellington and UFT, as well as marketing strategy, development for financial advisors in Ontario. Secondly, John is also a founding partner at BTA, Business Transition Alliance. BTA is Toronto-based management consulting firm, helping business leaders to develop and implement effective strategy to increase value and profitability specialized in business transition. At BTA, John, with his expertise, has been help, helping company leaders navigate the IPO process and to help business owners build value and improve processes in preparation for transition or succession. John is a past board member of Canada Lens Association and uh, also make a wish foundation. Uh, John is also past chair at Tech and BNI Networks. His hobbies include marathon running and cross country skiing, as well as maintaining 50 acre hobby farm north of Toronto. Please let me welcome John Huston. Hey, John, how you doing? Ah, oh, great, Gurmeet. Thank you very much for uh, the introduction and for having me here today. Nice to Thank see you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for joining me, John. Uh, the, the, John, I wanted to get your get take on, uh, first of all, how are you doing uh, during this COVID-19? Uh, COVID you know, it's been, it's been a long time. How have how, how you, how you been coping with that whole, whole thing? Well, it's uh, on a, certainly on a personal front, we're dealing with, in our family with this, many of the same issues that everyone is. Mm -hmm. that it's, it's becoming more and more of a challenge to get together as, as families and, and with our friends. But we're finding all kinds of new ways to do that as well. And, and certainly a medium such as this, where we can all chat together and has opened up all a whole bunch of new opportunities, um, both from a business standpoint and from a personal standpoint. We're, uh, we're talking to clients now that are further afield than we may have limited mm -hmm. our, our focus on purely on uh, you know, GTA and GTA area clients. Uh, we can now talk to people in, in all, all across Canada, and we've even Thank talking you. to some folks in the United States. So mm -hmm. um, it's and it's making our time, I think, a little bit more productive. Uh, today's been a busy day of meetings back to back, uh, mm -hmm. but without the commute, it's uh, it's been a lot easier. I haven't had to drive across the city or uh, uh, make any uh, huge uh, changes of of. Uh, of of location. So mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, we're all getting accustomed to it and uh, we're, it looks like it's going to be around for a while. So we're going to have to continue to get used to it. Yeah. You think that John in the longer run, this style of communication is here to stay um, or before we go back to in-person meetings and all that stuff? Uh, that's an interesting question, Gurmeet. Um, there was some research that came out uh, in May that was done by McKinsey and uh, they did so focused on some businesses in March and April timeframe and early May timeframe mm -hmm. um, and found that those companies who had jumped into social media and into marketing online and to having Zoom meetings and to, um, you know, taking full advantage of it, 
did very well. And mm -hmm. their revenues didn't suffer. But the, the good news was that their employees were a lot more engaged and their margins improved. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not going to go away. I mean, once businesses have had the opportunity to, to test that and see that it works and they can continue to make money, uh, they're not going to go back to doing it the way they, and I'm not exclusively, to the mm -hmm. way they did it before. I get you. How about John? Yeah. Uh, so things like a company culture and, and that team spirit, and you think that, that people can maintain that through this, these channels as well, or that has to go back to uh, an office that create that company culture that people uh, you know, normally need? Yeah, that's certainly a difficult one, Gurmeet. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but again, I, I see people responding. We have clients, for example, who um, have, uh, you know, offered both the, their essential services and they've offered both uh, to work from home or to come into the office a couple of days a week. Mm -hmm. um, and people are balancing that and they're finding that a lot of, um, a lot of young mothers who are in the workforce are finding mm -hmm. it uh, a little bit easier to, to manage around uh, a family. Um, but I, I think that we're all gonna have to face the fact that um, we're gonna have to change the way we do our business. And mm -hmm. as I said earlier, it's part of it's gonna be with the technology, but part of it's gonna be with the expectation of what we get out of our jobs. And you refer to culture, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's gonna be up to companies to do a different job, a better job of getting their client, their employees engaged, uh, whether it's, you, you know, kind of fun uh, adventure things that they do together online or how, whatever those things are, um, that's going to be key to keeping people engaged in the business. Mm -hmm. um, it's early days, but uh, some of the clients we're working with, we're seeing them experiment with um, different ways of, of communicating with their employees and giving them different responsibilities. One of the key things that uh, we see and, and we're talking to clients about is making sure that your employees are part of the conversation around how the business is changing and so that they feel that their voice is being heard. And uh, as they do that, and of course, most a lot of those employees are a younger generation and they have some you know interesting ideas around how to use different technologies to, to do the job and mm -hmm. if they see themselves represented in where the company is going um it, it does increase their their engagement in the business mm -hmm. gotcha yeah certainly it's uh it created a lot of management challenges here and there but i think uh, there's opportunity maybe hybrid mode you know some in office some in a uh, uh, and a remote will always uh, be part of the business, I guess, right? Yeah, for sure, yeah. Okay, so um, I know there's so much change during this COVID, um, I, you know, any thoughts on, you know, what, what's the biggest changes you saw, you know, in, in a business during this whole COVID? Well, I, th I think the biggest change is around um, where companies are focusing. And uh, <clears throat> we, we talk about it, there's, there's essentially three areas where um, we recommend that companies focus right now. Um, and number one is the employees, making mm -hmm. sure that, as I mentioned earlier, employees are engaged. If you're pivoting the business or changing direction in some way, shape, or form, that the employees, the senior management team especially, have a, a, a say in that, have a role in that, and are, are asked to participate in how that might happen. Mm -hmm. to, to keep those employees engaged and, and focused is, is crucial. So that's, that's the number one thing. Um, the second thing is infrastructure um, around building out, uh, you know, systems and processes. And, and this is kind of a little bit in your world where mm -hmm. companies need to really make sure that they've got all of the, uh, the right systems in place so that they can scale, whether it's scale up or scale down, um, they can manage that without that completely disrupting the business. And has positioned them to grow and to change. So that's the second one. The third component of this is relationships with clients. And this, if nothing else has, has come out of this whole pandemic for all of us, it's recognizing that we're all people and we're all in this together. And mm -hmm. our clients are people too. And these are client, these are people that are suffering the same issues we are, both on a, a home front, a personal front, and on a business front. And 
the more we can recognize and sort of empathize with the way that clients are dealing with this and reorganize our business. And this goes back to points one and two about making our people aware and making our infrastructure capable of managing things differently. But if we can respond to clients' needs who need to be dealt with differently, then that business is going to be very strong going forward. And so th those are the three areas that we see people focusing on and we encourage people to focus on is, is the employees, the infrastructure, and making sure those client relationships are solid and intact. Yeah, no, definitely those three things are critical for any organization. I think since the, once is COVID-19 guys, the vaccine's out, um, once it's over, then definitely those, those are the you know, areas where business can be solid, I guess, right? Definitely. Um, so the vaccines are, um, you know, uh, are out right now, and uh, where do you see, you know, for the next year, 2021, you know, how long, you know, any any uh, views on that? What do you think? How long uh, it will take to get to general public, and by the time the businesses start bouncing back, what do you think? Yeah, about that? I, I think that's a that's a very key issue right now, Gurmeet. The um, obviously uh, all the headlines and the media is around, you know, the just recently we've had the very, the first inoculation here in, in Ontario and, and, mm -hmm. and in the States and in the UK. And it's, it, we now see we're on a, on a trend towards, towards all of this. Um, I, I believe this is going to have a, a, a huge impact on people's attitudes. I hope it's mm -hmm. all positive. I mean, we are seeing a little bit of a backlash here that people feel that they can relax their, uh, their lifestyle a little bit because there is it now uh, mm -hmm. there does seem to be a cure or at least a, a, a vaccine that will assist along these lines. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping that people don't take advantage of that. But what I, what I see happening is that there's from a business perspective, there's a couple of things that, that we're keeping our eye on. Mm -hmm. um, as most people know, if you, if you do read the, the financial news or the headlines, um, there's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines right now, both from a personal standpoint and people's personal bank accounts and in corporate Canada. And there's a, there, there is money waiting to take uh, advantage of, the, of this opportunity. And so what we're seeing with clients is there's some of them, and, and we're doing this ourselves, we're sitting on, on some cash to make sure that when and as things start to open up again, we can take advantage of it. And we just know that there is cash out there waiting to take advantage of opportunities. And so two things are going to happen. If certain clients, and we see it in our, some of our clients, are not as busy now as they have been because the people that are their clients are holding on to their cash, that's going to change. There's going to be this influx. As soon as things start to open up a little bit, there's going to be this rush of cash to the market and people are going to start doing more transactions. There's going to be more business going on. That's on a commercial basis, on a day-to-day -day on, on Main Street. Um, there's going to be a lot more activity going on. Mm -hmm. The other aspect of it, the second component of it is on the M&A side, where there are people out there who are looking right now for deals. They're mm. assuming that companies that are going through this are you know, desperate and need to sell. And so there's a, there are a lot of potential buyers out there right now, again, with significant dollars waiting to pick up businesses who are selling. And I've done some research on this and there are currently 1.2 million small and medium sized businesses in Canada. And if you look at um, that, that represents about 99% of all the businesses in Canada are small and medium size. Mm -hmm. You look at the demographics of people who own that, those businesses, a significant number of those businesses are owned by baby boomers, people who are set to exit. Mm -hmm. And there's some research done on this last year that suggested that over the next 10 years, there's going to be some 74% of those 1.2 million dollar wow. million businesses mm -hmm. in play, somehow they're going to there is going to be some kind of transition, whether it's an exit or stepping back or selling it to kids and family or management, whatever mm -hmm. that transition is going to be. So there's going to be this huge rush to buy 
businesses. Combine that with the money that's sitting on the sidelines. Over the next five to 10 years, there's going to be a huge amount of interest in the transitioning businesses and the M&A world is going to explode. So we look at that as being two components of what's happening uh, currently. I see. So some, some of that, you know, during this COVID, you know, I saw a lot of news about that either companies taking over um, or, or uh, you know, companies being sold to somebody, you know, that I see a lot of companies changing in the news. Is that part of what you just describing that, that the money is sitting on in a flex or is it part of the survival or is it a bit of both? What are your thoughts on that? All the transitions happened during this COVID stuff. Yeah, I, I think it's a bit of both, uh, Gurmeet, that mm -hmm. um, there are people uh, that are spending some money, uh, but there are more that are sitting on the sidelines, and they're 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 either waiting or they're being cautious about the even the companies that are doing well. We're working with uh, two clients specifically right now. They've had banner years, and they're in you know they are they are in businesses that um, are essential. Certainly, mm -hmm. designated as essential in in this in this time. And they've added employees and their sales are, are, are continuing to go up. Um, but even they aren't over investing in their businesses right now. They're, they're being a little bit cautious in terms mm -hmm. of how much to spend. Because even though you may be doing really well right now, um, none of us really know how this is all going to come out, how this is all going to end. So they're, even the ones who are doing well seem to be sitting on a bit of capital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I'm connecting a dot, John, from your from your views, you know, uh, there's a lot of money sitting in a, in a flex. And also the three critical uh, component you mentioned early on, uh, one was, you know, invest in your people, you know, uh, make sure the people are taken care of and your infrastructure and, uh, you know, in your systems and all this stuff. Where do you see that most of this money, you know, once uh, this COVID is over, where do you see the money going? Is it going into those those three components that are critical we talk about or is it going somewhere else? Where do you see the investments going from, uh, uh, coming from this, well, this money? I guess in a perfect world, I would hope that that money is starting now to trickle into those three areas. Mm -hmm. um, quite uh, honestly, if companies aren't prepared coming out of this, they're going to get left behind because it's, it's, it's only going to, it's certainly in the M&A side of it, it's only mm -hmm. going to be the best companies that get the best value that are going to sell. Shoppers who are looking to take on new businesses want businesses that run efficiently, that have engaged employees, that have infrastructure and processes that are well documented, that have a good database of clients and have a well diversified client base and have clients that are, are you know, are loyal. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for that companies. That's their expectation. That's almost table stakes in, in mm -hmm. the new world that you mm -hmm. have done the work on that. So the money should be investing in those areas over the next months, weeks, months, to make mm -hmm. sure that as we do come out of this, companies are in as good a condition as they can be, uh, so that if they are, you know, those, some of the companies that are, are going to be sold, they can get the top value for it. But mm -hmm. assume they're still just going to be operating businesses that they can compete and they can be ahead of the competition because they are more efficient, their employees are engaged, and they've got a stronger customer base. Mm -hmm. So assuming that a company is spending that money now to get them ready will prepare them for either outcome at the end, a stronger ongoing operating business or a company that's more viable for sale. Mm -hmm. How about the company who not looking for sale or they're not looking to uh, acquire any business? How about they just want to scale up operation? Is it the same key, you know, same you know, items apply to them as well, or, or they got to take a different path? Yeah, we, we look at transition in a broad sense, Grimmie. We look at it as uh, either growing the company, exiting mm -hmm. the company, or maybe the senior people just want to step back and let others operate it. So it's growth, sure. exit, step back. So if I'm looking at growing this company, um, it's a tough time to grow. And, I, and again, I, the, the companies that we work with that are doing well aside, mm -hmm. um, the vast majority of companies, it's a tough time for them to, to grow. But if they haven't put the work into um, building out that employee engagement and that infrastructure and, and focusing on the clients, there's no way they're going to grow, especially mm -hmm. now 
but even in good times, because the ones that are, are going to be the ones that are going to succeed. So mm -hmm. my advice to, to companies right now who are sitting back and just waiting and getting themselves prepared is don't wait too much longer. Now is the time mm -hmm. to start investing in, in your own self and your own business so that you are ready. It'll, it'll be, make you a much more viable company on a go forward basis. And as I said earlier, a lot more viable from a takeover perspective. Mm -hmm. That definitely makes sense, John. Um, how, how, how do you see this health and safety stuff that introduced during the COVID? Um, you know, there's a lot of compliance looks like coming down a, you know, down a pipe around the health and safety. Do you think that becomes just part of major part of the every, every, every business process in the future? Or, or is it temporary to stay? You know, how, how do you see companies looking at those health and safety uh, uh, side of things? Yeah, that, that's a great, uh, a great question, Gurmeet. Um, I think it's, it's here to stay. The call I was on just before this, it was a, we're talking about a client that is looking at introducing a new product into the, into the market. And it's mm -hmm. a health and safety uh, product. And the question is, um, how quickly does this need to move? Do they need to be going into the market right away because COVID is on everybody's mind? And my opinion and, uh, and our opinion in our firm is that, yes, the big issue of, uh, of COVID and the pandemic is going to be modified somewhat through time and through the vaccine and through ongoing practice of just better health practices. That's, it's, going to, it's going to modify that somewhat. How much, none of us know. Yeah. However, that concern is not going to go away. I mean, people, the world has never been hit as hard as this has hit us in terms of a wake-up call to what, how fragile our existence yeah. really is. And so the basics that go into um, preserving health and maintaining a healthy workplace Mm -hmm. And just maintaining an attitude of thinking about that is not going to go away. Certainly mm -hmm. not, not in the foreseeable future. So mm -hmm. I think to answer your question, I think there is going to continue to be a concern and a, and a need for investment in PPE and for products that will continue to offer uh, some measure of protection um, all along the way. I don't think that's going to go away, certainly in, a, in the foreseeable future. I see. Do you think companies are investing some, a lot of money into that, that side as well, like you know, protecting and you know, um, office spaces changing as we, as we come back to uh, workspaces? A lot of those things are going to change? That's going to be huge. You know, there's going to be a huge, uh, in the commercial real estate business and the office space uh, business, um, there's going to be huge adjust adjustments made. Um, as I said earlier, in some of the research that was done um, by McKinsey, um, companies have found that they can be more profitable and be as successful, and the sales didn't suffer through not having all those office spaces to use. Mm -hmm. you know, they had people working from home, and they were doing what we're doing here, and they were canceling to travel and all of that stuff. And so that's all going to come under re review. So that's going to continue to have an impact um, on how businesses rethink uh, their companies. Um, the large companies, I know, for, for example, of several large businesses who, where people I know work or are involved, um, they are all undergoing significant rethink of how they deploy their, their human resources. Got you. Got you. So uh, many friends, John, we talked about, you know, it looks like, you know, what worked before COVID, it, it may not work from business owner standpoint or, or a leadership standpoint. Um, looks like we're going to need different plans to, to after COVID, um, how, to, how to tackle our businesses. So how does business leader, you know, do they need to, you know, um, uh, polish some skill set? You know, what, how, do they need a different perspective? You know, how do they go about and, and learn all these things and, and uh, come up with the different plans after COVID so they can, they can excel other sites? Well, I, I think it's a, it's, it's a combination of having a clear understanding, whether they have a compliance uh, person on their staff or whether they have uh, um, some means of staying on top of what regulations are required. I mm -hmm. think that's, that's basic. Um, there's also a need for communication. 
um, of what they're doing and how, and it's a communication and implies a two-way conversation between themselves and their employees, themselves and their clients. And mm. corporations are going to need to keep those lines of communication open. How comfortable are their employees coming into the office? How comfortable are your clients if you're in a retail facing business uh, dealing with you, um, you know, and, and what are their, what's their feedback? Uh, mm -hmm. we, are all, we all go into, uh, to a certain degree, or um, offices or, or uh, big box stores or whatever, grocery stores, and we're, we all now have a, a level of expectation of how mm -hmm. we're going to be treated, certain distancing, a certain mm -hmm. availability of hand sanitizers and things that will make us safe. Um, again, that's not going to go away for uh, the foreseeable future. So companies have to understand what their clients and customers comfort level is, as well as managing um, from a compliance standpoint, what they need to put in place. So to your question, yeah, there's going to be a continued investment in, in, in the need to maintain that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, again, it's, that's not going to change for the next I little see. while. Looks like communication is going to be the key, no matter which way we go. You know, you got to be the same page with the people. When exactly. people not when people not in an office, how do you maintain the level of condition, John? You know, in offices where easy, you know, we call a meeting. We all used to sit around the board table. It's much easier to be on the same page. But when you're working from home and employees have a different schedules, you know, what companies get us? They have to do in order to maintain that communication level and make sure everybody's on the same page. Yeah, I I, I think. You know, we will all get more used to getting our information in a non-personal way, whether it's through email or some kind of a conversation like you and I are having now, um, whether it's making team leaders within a business responsible for managing that mm -hmm. um, and, and, and further building those expectations into employees' job descriptions and how they are measured? Are they are they communicating all of these issues out to their to their employees? Are, mm -hmm. Is your management team, um, you know, being measured on how effectively they're communicating these messages out? I mean, those are all going to be important uh, parts of of uh, managers' KPIs in terms of you know what are the what are they expected to do? And this is just going to be one more element. You know, we talked uh, for years, there was some discussion about the triple bottom line and the environment was one of the issues that mm -hmm. the companies were being called to task on. And, and that's not going to go away either, by the way. But now they've added something else to the bottom yeah. line in, in corporations. And that's how uh, responsible are you being in terms of all, how compliant you're being from a health and safety perspective. And those 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 demands are, and rightfully should, be placed on corporations to maintain that. And there should be penalties for not maintaining that. And yeah. those need to be built in to how a company communicates internally and externally. You're gonna see, you're gonna to continue to see on companies' websites, for example, how, what their policy is in terms of health and safety and how they manage wow. their employees mm -hmm. and, and, and that's just going to be part of the culture, and it needs to be. Yeah, and, and you know, maybe that's the reason we saw a lot of training going through this COVID-19 health and safety training or, or system training or employee training. We saw a lot of emphasis on a training. That could be part of what you just mentioned, that, you know, not only we need to communicate, we also have, also have to measure the effectiveness of the communication as well, you know, how well the people are communicating afterwards. That's right, and that, that will be part of it, Gurmeet. There there will be measurement techniques built into those communication programs in terms of how effectively the message is getting across, what needs to be changed, what's understood, what isn't. Um, the, all of those things are, that's not new to um, internal and, and external communications. We mm -hmm. come as the, as a society in a business world, we've become pretty good at measuring how effective our, our uh, communication is. Uh, it's just gonna add another dimension to it of now, it's, it's more around health and safety. 
I got you. It looks like a lot more challenges this this whole COVID security for business leadership standpoint or, or a management standpoint that not only they have to manage what they were managing before, but there's more items to include it to on the plate that they have to manage these items as well. A hundred percent. That that you know they that you've probably seen it as well. Um, but there's even from an accounting perspective in business now, um, they've they've changed the terminology of EBITDA to EBITDA and they added the C at the end saying that that's the COVID impact. So there is an expectation that um, from a financial perspective, um, you're going to have to build in the cost of maintaining a certain level of compliance and a certain level of, of safety. And so, you know, once you build that into the balance sheet or into the financials rather, um, you're, that's going to be part of what gets measured in a, in a business. I see. And so it's, it's, it's definitely going to be a component when, when it starts to get into that sort of granular level of how you, your business operates. It will, be mm-hmm. a, it will be a cost, continue to be a cost going forward. So for, from business standpoint, uh, John, even I don't need a compliance for my you know, clientele, but if I'm doing a business with a client who requires compliance, I need to be on the same compliance level, right? Yes. So, so this thing's going to trickle down no matter who you are in a business. You know, if, if, even you don't need it because you, you, know, you, you, know, you don't have those requirements, but if you have a clients who need that, you need to be on the same level. Or you have a vendors who need that, you need to be on the same level. So we all have to be on the same level. Is that what, what you uh, mentioned? Yeah, yeah I, I think so. I mean, think of it as a, another form of ISO. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a level of, of expectation that over the years has become accepted. In, mm-hmm. in business and it has to be ISO compliant. And there's a, a series of um, compliance measures that, that you have to go through to get this ISO designation and compliance um, uh, designation. And this would, I see it that this is being no different than that, that mm-hmm. there will be an expectation that there's a certain level of compliance from a health and safety perspective that is built into transactions. And um, if you're at the initiating bit of that as a manufacturer, uh, right down through the whole distribution chain and, yeah. and how that may impact um, retail um, mm-hmm. and all of whatever those compliance issues are, are gonna have to be named and ma- maintained and measured all the way through that, that whole cycle. So, you know, again, I, we, as a, as a business culture, we, uh, we have seen that and are comfortable with that as being part of what's necessary to operate. And mm-hmm. I, I don't see this being any different. It's just going to add another level of, of what we all have to worry about. Wow. Interesting. How does that change is that all this changes that, you know, um, your, your, your world uh, in, in a BTA or on a, in a clear water communication? How does all these uh, um, impact on your side, John, where you were working before COVID and, and where you are right now? Well, as you mentioned earlier, Gurmeet, it's all about communication. Um, and of course, I, I tend to see the world through a communication lens, so that makes mm-hmm. me a little bit different. But um, uh, certainly, um, we're, we're going to have to all make sure that there is an understanding of what needs to be done. And, you, and you're right, it's gonna be at different levels depending where you are in the food chain and all of that. But that, uh, that wherever you are needs to have that understanding, you need to have that understanding. And then it, the idea of communicating that and reassuring people that you are doing that um, is gonna be key. How, how well do your employees do? And it's gonna start with the employees. You can't. Mm-hmm. You can't sell to the outside what you don't manage on the inside of a business and what yeah. you don't talk about on the inside. So mm-hmm. it has to become, you know, common conversation within the company. And then that gets built into everything that gets communicated externally. So from our perspective, you know, we see that as being, again, an ongoing component of mm-hmm. what we will be helping clients do, um, making sure that this component of, um, you know, safety and, and compliance in, is, is, is present and that it's being um, administered properly, that people understand it. And 
both from an internal and from an external perspective. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just see that, you know, are we ever going to go back to a time when that isn't important? Um, I doubt it. Mm -hmm. I doubt that that's going to be the case. I think certainly in, in my foreseeable future, uh, there's going to continue to be a concern because um, people have recognized that I heard an interesting one this morning in a meeting when somebody said um, there's one uh, piece of uh, conversation we have to take out of our conversation. And that is, well, that'll never happen. Because <laughs> yeah, that's it, happened. <laughs> it just happened. <laughs> it just happened. Yeah. And it's good. It could happen again. You know, there's there's no guarantee that it's not going to happen again. Mm -hmm. And so people are, are, are going to protect against that, you know, having having been burnt once, we're going to be certainly twice or three times shy. Exactly. Uh, you know, especially with the, with the people, you, you know, end of the day, you know, it comes down to people, your people, you know, either um, your clients or your employees, you know, uh, those are the two uh, areas you got to protect. And there's no amount of health and safety you can drill down to, to these two components to make sure everybody's safe, right? Um, exactly. Yeah, no, I said so that, you know, and, and from your uh, standpoint, Jen, you know, where you see, you know, opportunities for you guys looks like, you know, uh, we talked about the cash flow and, and uh, the baby boomers that, you know, somebody's looking for a transition in a business. Is how do they prepare for these these things? You know, um, people are thinking, you know, you know, I'm going to start looking for my exit in the next five years or like, how do they start planning even after COVID? So, you know, they got to take care of this part first, get over this side uh, this COVID. So how do they start preparing and, and uh, how, what, what, this, what kind of item they start working on? Well, we look at this as all being part of, of running a, building a well-run business. Mm -hmm. And if I go, I keep going back to those three aspects of it. Um, the employees, the infrastructure and the, the client, um, you know, the maintenance of clients mm -hmm. and whether you're just muddling your way through a very, very tough situation and, or whether you're preparing this company to sell and you want to get the maximum value for it, those basic things don't change. I mean, you, you still need to have all of those three things firing uh, as efficiently as possible. Mm -hmm. And so from our perspective, that's kind of where we come in and look at it and say, you know, we have a, actually a, a, a very detailed what we call a 17 point diagnostic that we take clients through from when we onboard them and when they come to us initially and we mm. take them through this 17 points and we analyze the business from each aspect. Um, and we identify, you know, what's in good shape, what needs to be worked on, but they can probably do that themselves if they set their minds to it. And what's over here on the right hand side that, that is really paramount that they, they address it. Mm -hmm. And they don't necessarily have the skills to do that. And maybe that's where we can help them if, if that's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we put in a plan in place as to how to, you know, prioritize those things and, and what are the next steps to, to fix it. And it's, you know, from then it just becomes an operational issue. And this whole thing of COVID is, is now one of those elements. And so, you know, we have to, as you've said earlier, we have to build that, that in as part of the conversation with them. What are you doing? How are your employees knowledgeable? What's the knowledge level of your employees? How are your clients? You know, all of that. But mm -hmm. it, it has to be part of what we do. But you take that whole 17 points and you can still boil it down to the three things that people need to think about. And those are the three I've mentioned. Mm -hmm. I got you. There was, I think there was a link on for those 17 points to do assessment on your website as well, John, right? If I, yeah, I'm there mistaken. is. There okay. is. Yeah. And uh, people can go in and, and have a look at it. And uh, and um, if they do want to hear anything more about it, we'll we'll be glad to take them through it. We it's a it's an assessment tool that we don't charge for. It's 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 complimentary. We'll we'll sit down with a prospective client and and take them through it and uh, see if there there's some way that, you know, we can certainly help them identify where the issues are. If there's a way we can help them. Uh, fine, we'll, we'll move forward. If, if really all they need to do is get a better understanding of it themselves and run with it, then that's fine too. Mm -hmm. But uh, for sure, if people want that information, be glad to chat with them.
Yeah. No, I will include a link to your site uh, just below the video as well. When I send the video out in the email, I will include okay. a link below that as well. So Fantastic. people can uh, check out that way. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. So any specific industry where you see opportunities uh, in, in, you know, certain industry, I know pharmaceuticals, one of the industry where, you know, a lot of opportunities came during this COVID-19. Uh, uh, any other industry where you see some opportunities in the market after COVID and where we see there may not be the good opportunities for some of them? So what you, any thoughts? Um, I, I think we're going to be seeing, uh, uh, this is not just me, but it's obviously the world. Um, technology is, 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 obviously going to be a continue to be a huge player as we move forward i heard an interesting thing when this whole pandemic started that um really what the pandemic had done was brought everybody forward 10 years literally overnight and you know look at this conversation you and i are having now this technology has been around for for years um, mm. Back in my Nortel days, uh, we talked about video conferencing and sold video conferencing products. And, and, you know, that was many years ago. And so the technology has been there for a long time. It took a worldwide crisis to make it as usable and as user friendly and as, as, um, as all encompassing as it has become. So technology is a no-brainer. That, that's mm -hmm. this is going to con just continue the the spiral, the upward ramp. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, certainly healthcare and healthcare services is is going to be continue to be very strong. Um, I think uh, the whole area of service and personalizing service and making people feel special, um, whatever you would call that industry, is also going to do very well. Personalized service is something that people feel they want to be pampered and people feel they want to be looked at. Um, I was reading some interesting research last night that talks about um, the fact that, um, that certain things have changed over the last few years, few, uh, two years actually. And uh, one of those aspects is the expectation that people have about being treated as an individual. And uh, that comes both from a personal standpoint and from a workplace standpoint. So things that cater to individuals and, and that's gonna, I think, do very well. Um, there's the obvious ones I, I think mm -hmm. are up for grabs and I don't, I don't know yeah. how or if they'll recover like large events and, and mm -hmm. large restaurants and, and certain aspects of retail. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it's, it's still a little early to predict who the winners are going to be. Yeah, no, definitely technology, as you mentioned, and hotel days, you know, this, this technology, when the talking remotely was nice to have technology. It, you yeah. know, all of a sudden with the COVID, it became a requirement. Mm -hmm. um, it was the only way out uh, for people to stay connected and communicate, right? Um, but for a long time, it was nice to have, but it became critical uh, yeah. during the COVID. So I think that's what changed people's mindset, but this is the only means to survive in a business was, was remotely. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Um, so I got, I like, you know, I, I think I got to all the questions, John, anything you want to mention to uh, business owners who are, uh, you know, looking on the sidelines, you know, or, or they are thinking through, we you know what their next plan is after COVID-19, anything you can add to their mindset or anything you can give them perspective, you know, what, what they have to do, you know, to get over, you know, vaccines almost out, what they have to do to get ready for next year. Well, I, it, to me, it all goes back to this, uh, 17 point diagnostic uh, that we take clients through. I mean, um, all businesses are a little bit different, but in a lot of ways, they're all the same. And it's, it boils down to basic, op basic operating principles. And mm. um, so if, if they do have, if any of your listeners or clients have a uh, some thoughts or concerns, we'd be glad to sit down and, and take them through this and, and help them figure out through their own uh, analysis of what their situation is and where they should focus. As a business owner, as you know, being one yourself, um, there's all these things that are going on every day in your, in your world. And they mm -hmm. are all equally as important, it seems, some days. And it's tough to, to segment out the urgent from the important. And business owners get a little bit 
numbed to that whole thing because they just sometimes they bounce from one crisis to the next crisis to the next. Got it. Yeah. Without the opportunity of really being able to understand what the crucial things are. And so going, sitting down and going through this, this bit of an analysis takes a couple hours to sit down and really go through it. And then we'll take a couple of hours afterwards at, and at our end and go back and, and analyze it and put some recommendations together. Um, but, uh, you know, and as I say, we don't, we don't charge for that. It's just a, a way for people to get mm -hmm. to understand a little bit more about what they should be focused on and a little bit gives them some insights as to how we think and how we work. So gotcha. if that's of any benefit to them, then that would be great. Okay. I'm going to include a link to that in, in an email, but uh, okay. people who want to connect with you, where can they find you, John? How can people get connected with you? Well, my email address is uh, jhodson at btahelps.com. And if there's anybody that wants to chat with me, by all means, that's the best way. And the website to connect with you, uh, is that still BTA Helps or is it another website or how do they? No, do that's, they the, that's the uh, website is btahelps.com. Okay. I'll include the link for the website as well in the email. Okay. Good stuff. Beautiful. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time, John. Enjoy the rest of the year and uh, yeah. hope to see you soon. Thank you, Gurmeet. Thank you All very right. much for having me on here. This has been a lot of fun. I appreciate right. it. Thank you so much, Jen. Pleasure. All the best. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Bye-bye.